Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and I've been meaning to do a USB Type-C survival guide for a while because, as you all know, and some of you may roll your eyes over, I bought a uh, MacBook Pro, which has nothing but these new USB Type-C connectors on there. And there's been a lot of folks saying, oh, if you buy these MacBooks, you're going to have to get all these dongles and everything. And uh, the truth is, it's not as bad as you might have heard it might be. And I wanted to do this video now because I'm starting to see these USB Type-C ports uh, pop up on other devices that are outside of the Apple ecosystem, like like this one from Asus we reviewed last night. Uh, this is the Chromebook C302. It also has USB Type-C connectors and only USB Type-C connectors on it. And I thought, you know what, now's the time. I think we gotta have this discussion about how you live with these new ports. So uh, what I'm gonna do in this video is show you some inexpensive ways you can get your old USB stuff to work with your current devices without having to use a dongle. Uh, but I will show you some dongles that I have purchased that have been kind of useful. So I uh, will show you kind of the, uh, the cheap way and the more expensive way depending on what your uh, needs might be. Now, uh, I do also want to mention that USB Type-C has been a bit of a mess in its implementation. Now, what Apple does, and what this Asus Chromebook also does, is that uh, these ports do everything that they should do, which is power. It, so if you want to charge your device, you can plug your power cable into it. They do data, USB data, and they also transmit videos. If you want to plug it into a monitor, uh, you do have to get a dongle for that, but these ports do everything, and it's been uh, pretty convenient to have that on there. But not every manufacturer has implemented USB Type-C the same way. So some some uh, allow you to do just power, some just do data and video, some do power if you have their power adapter. There's a whole bunch of different things out there and not every device you're going to see here uh, will work the same way with your computer. So you definitely need to do some research first to make sure that the USB Type-C connector you have uh, will support everything you hope it does. And uh, what Asus did on this one is that they did uh, put a little display port indicator on their USB port to let you know that it does USB and display port. It also does power, but they don't indicate that on the side of the case, but uh, the power port does work on both sides for charging the device. So first thing I wanted to show you was just the fact that you can likely get by with a five or six dollar cable uh, to connect up your old devices. So this is a, a cable I bought on Amazon. I'll put some links down below for you. Uh, it's just a standard micro USB 3 to USB type C connector. So let me get in on my closer camera here and you can see what those ports look like. So chances are you've got a hard drive or a card reader or something with that port on there and you just buy this cable and plug it into this uh, end there and then the USB type C connector uh, goes into your MacBook or your Chromebook and your hard drive will work and you don't have to have a $75 dongle to do it because USB type C is backwards compatible to older forms of USB provided you got the right cable and there are plenty of cheap cables out there that uh, will get the job done for you. You do need to be careful with some of the power delivery cables because there was a a pretty big scandal with some cheap cables that were not able to handle the voltage that uh, this new USB standard can support. So I think for things like hooking up an external hard drive or something, the uh, inexpensive cables will be fine, but you might want to stick to a, a more reputable brand on Amazon versus some uh, fly-by-night one that might save you a dollar or two. So I think if you spend five or six bucks on a cable like this, uh, you should be fine. They don't transmit a lot of power to these external hard drives and everything uh, seems to be working pretty well there. So you might be saying, well, that's great, Lon, but what about when you've got something like this to connect to it, a little dongle? And uh, what I found for that issue was uh, this little device here. This is called uh, a, this is uh, from Ranky, and what it is is a uh, female USB connector on one end, and then you've got the uh, USB Type-C on the other. So all you have to do here is just take your little dongle out, and uh, they never go in the right way either, which is one of the nice things about USB Type-C. It doesn't matter which way you plug it in. Uh, but you connect your USB stick or your little keyboard transmitter to the end of that, uh, and then you just go over to your device and plug it in, and uh, you're good to go. It's a little ugly because you do have this larger um, thing that you're plugging into sticking out from the side, but uh, it is an inexpensive way to get uh, going with this. They sell these in two packs on Amazon uh, for about 6 or $7. So yeah, you might lose it, but um, it is a, a quick and easy adapter that you can get that's not going to cost you 80 bucks to uh, get your older uh, USB sticks and keyboard transmitters working with it. I do th I'm, I'm sure we'll be seeing USB Type-C memory sticks coming out in uh, n n large numbers later this year, and I think there are a few that actually have both connectors built into it, but if you do have to connect something like one of these keyboard transmitters, uh, that little device will do the job. Now what I have been seeing is a bunch of hard drives coming out that have USB Type-C connectors on them already, which is really simple because you can just take a standard USB Type-C cable, uh, plug it into your device, and you're good to go. Everybody asked me about this orange cable. This came with a uh, LaCie drive that I reviewed recently. I really like the cable. It's really sturdy and rugged and cool looking, but I don't know where to get them uh, in this color. You'll have to do some research on that. But what happens when you want to connect your USB Type-C 
uh, device to a older USB device? Well, you can do that uh, by getting a cable that works in the opposite direction. So here we've got USB-C to uh, standard USB, and this will cost about the same as other USB cables, and you can plug uh, your new stuff into your old stuff if you need to do that. So the reality is you don't need to spend a lot of money to get your old USB devices working with your new one. You can get a couple of adapters like that, buy a couple of cables like this, and for probably under $20, get all of your old USB stuff uh, working with your new USB Type-C devices and you're good to go. However, you do have an issue with USB Type-C to be thinking about, which is the fact that manufacturers tend to put less ports on the computer than they used to because of these universal ports that they now have. So a great example of that is the 12-inch uh, MacBook I bought about two years ago, and this only has a single USB Type-C port. So when you plug power into it, you can't plug anything else in unless you invest in a dongle. And that's where this whole dongle thing uh, started coming into uh, the discussion because on this computer at least there was no other option you had to buy this thing from Apple nobody else had an adapter like this and this was $80 uh, just to get a single USB port and HDMI out uh, with your new MacBook now things have gotten a little bit better now that we're seeing more industry adoption so uh, of course the MacBook Pro has four of those ports uh, the Asus here has two but remember computers used to have a dedicated port for power and for video and for USB so I think the uh, on the net we're losing uh, ports here as uh, the, st the standard gets implemented. And as uh, the ports get more scarce, you then need to start thinking about the dongle. So we had uh, this one from Apple, which was $80 at the time it was released. Uh, this one I got in through the Amazon Vine program is from StarTech.com. Uh, this one's about $75 now, but it does a lot more. And I do want to mention in full disclosure, this was free of charge from Amazon Vine. All the opinions you are hearing are my own and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. I always do my disclaimers. And we're going to do them when appropriate. So that is how this one came in. Uh, now, what I like about this one, which by the way, I reviewed on my extras channel, is that uh, you get over a single USB Type-C cable, gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, and two USB ports, but also power delivery. So if you have uh, your MacBook cable or your Asus cable here, you plug it in over here, and you will be able to charge your computer, uh, get video out of it, and uh, get all this stuff transmitted via data uh, to the computer and out uh, with one cable, which is really helpful. The caveat, though, is that the uh, amount of power it can provide is good enough for this little Asus or the little MacBook, but not enough to fully power a MacBook Pro 15 or like a Dell XPS 15. So the, the smaller Ultrabook size computers are more compatible with this. So you might still need to connect your main power adapter up to a bigger computer. It will provide some power, but you might see your larger computer slowing down or drawing off the battery or not charging the battery because this will not be able to uh, transit all the power that those larger computers need. But uh, if you are finding yourself short of ports and have 75 bucks to spend, uh, this is pretty useful because you do get the video out, the network and additional USB ports on board. So this one is a, a pretty handy device to use. Another little handy thing that I came across is this little thing from CalDigit. They sent this to the channel free of charge as well. Again, they're not paying for the review and no one's reviewing this content. Uh, this device is uh, just a simple USB Type-C to HDMI connector, but I have found that it works with everything I plug it into. And Apple tends to be very finicky with third-party adapters. Uh, so far, this one has been working fine. Uh, this is about 20 bucks to get video out just on its own. Uh, so if you need some something like that, uh, 20 bucks isn't too high a price to pay. And then the last thing I've been using quite a bit, which is uh, from Apple, but surprisingly is not all that expensive, is this $29 adapter. Now, you might have heard of Thunderbolt before, especially if you are a Mac user. And uh, that port looked, uh, used to look like DisplayPort. And uh, what you could do is get um, docks that you can plug into it to uh, get a lot of ports expanded on your computer. So this is another example from StarTech that came in free of charge to the Amazon Vine program. And uh, this would allow you to plug in your Thunderbolt cable into your computer, then you would get all this stuff uh, kind of uh, replicated out over the Thunderbolt wire. And Thunderbolt has always been faster than USB and I've uh, been very good for this kind of activity. And I've got Thunderbolt docks all over the place. I've got one at my day job. I got one here. So whenever I'm uh, showing up somewhere, I can just pop my computer in and be good to go. The problem, of course, is that when you invested in Thunderbolt with the old connector, you need a way to get the new connector to work with it, which is what this $29, cable, $29 cable does. So I have a lot of Thunderbolt drive sleds and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I use this one quite a bit because I didn't have to go out and buy uh, all new Thunderbolt gear to make it work. And I have a feeling that uh, as Thunderbolt 3 becomes more of a prevalent standard, you might start seeing Thunderbolt 2 devices being sold at a discount. And if you do see them, grab them because this cable has been perfect. I mean, everything that I've plugged into it uh, with the old standard of Thunderbolt, at least on the Mac, 
uh, has worked just fine uh, on the new Mac here. And I did find on a few occasions it's worked with Windows also on my Dell XPS uh, 15. So uh, this was a pretty good purchase. Again, it's a dongle, but a useful dongle that allowed me not, ha allowed me not to have to go out and buy a whole bunch of new stuff. Now, I do want to give you one warning about Thunderbolt because uh, even though the connector is the same, it uses the USB Type-C connector, only one of the computers on the desk here actually supports it, which is this one on the bottom. Yet, uh, our Thunderbolt adapter can plug in without a problem into the Asus and into the old MacBook, both of which lack Thunderbolt. So it's just something that is inside the computer that works over that connector. And I know uh, there will be a ton of consumers who are going to be buying all these really cool Thunderbolt 3 devices only to find that they won't work on their computer because their computer doesn't support Thunderbolt over that port, which is why uh, you do need to take a look at your computer's manual or its product specifications and uh, make sure you know exactly what the port is capable of before you start buying dongles and other devices that may or may not work with it. Because again, everyone is implementing this USB Type-C standard uh, in many different ways. And I found so far at least that Apple has been pretty good about making their stuff work with everything with the exception of uh, the 12-inch MacBooks, which at the time that I'm recording this review do not support Thunderbolt over the USB Type-C port, but they do support everything else. But again, it's going to be very con uh, confusing for consumers uh, as these different standards are rolling out and uh, different ports, even though they are the same port, uh, support different things. Do let me know though down in the comments below some of the uh, USB Type-C devices and dongles that you have been using and have found helpful. I'd love to take a look at those, maybe review a few in the coming weeks. And that will do it for my USB Type-C survival guide for now. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.